What's up guys, welcome to Blake's Garage. Today we are going to be installing, so we're gonna be working on Travis, Road Rash. this guy right here, from Snail Performance, his 2017 Mustang GT350. These are some Petter sway bars, this is the rear right here. Travis has the front. front. Muy grande. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know, let's get these things on, huh? All right, somehow this has gotta magically go in there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll check it out, see what we can do. And we'll put this one back there somewhere. So what have we done so far? Uh, drove the car into the bay. All right, so first things we've done, we go ahead and put the car on the lift. Uh, since uh, it's a lot easier to use a lift, there's a rock hanging out of my car for some reason. But uh, you could probably do this definitely with a floor jack and some jack stands, but putting it on a lift definitely makes your life a lot easier. A couple different ways you could do it. You could probably start at the top, but we already have the car on the lift, so we're gonna start at the bottom. We're gonna move the factory end link. Go ahead and put our 1817 on here and move our end link. Move that guy, get that out of your way. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move the uh, suspension angle sensor because uh, the sway bar is actually gonna kind of turn and come out this way. Um, don't wanna damage this guy because it's probably not cheap and they probably don't have it in stock. So we're gonna go ahead and remove it. 13 here and 13 up there. Gonna remove them both. Just unplug this guy, which we've already pre-done for uh, studio purposes. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the uh, suspension angle sensor. This is only right now on the uh, Shelby. But uh, I'm sure, I think the new Shelby's that are coming, or not Shelby, but the new GT, they're going to have the uh, MagnaRide system, so they will have these. But on the GT, you definitely probably won't see this. How do you like the MagnaRide system? I like it. It's, uh, it's definitely nice. You can uh, tell a difference, uh, especially when I went to the Ford School. They had a kind of like a slalom setup where we could go through it in regular normal mode. Then you go through it in sport mode and track mode. You can kind of see the differences how the uh, car is. I guess you can put it in terms of swaying, I guess you could say. Uh, Get up to the sport or track mode, you can definitely feel that the adapters are a lot tighter, so the car doesn't, you know, you get that body roll that like a lot of people know, but you get it in sport track mode, less body roll, better better feel in the wheel, I guess you can say. Right. Are you going to test these out soon once we get them on? Uh, this weekend. Perfect. <laughs> we're going to a track day this weekend. Where's that at? Uh, we're going to Thunder Hill, going to run the West Track. So Brad and I are going to go out there with our Ford Power with the RS and the uh, GT350 and go see what they'll do. Uh, we're also going to remove our little uh, air deflector. Uh, this is not a factory piece. This is an add-on piece that we got from uh, Cooltech. Um, really neat. It already has uh, mounts in a factory location. The Cooltech guys give you a tap so you can go ahead and tap these and then you hardware put them on but we're gonna remove it because we don't want to damage it and definitely have extra room to kind of twist this sway bar out of the way now we'll go to the other side and pretty much repeat the same steps except we probably won't remove this and we won't remove the suspension sensor okay, I got some pretty long extensions there's some oil lines in the way but we can fish it down in there well, if we got one thing about Ford man I mean these things never will rattle apart ever. Right out of the way. you need a chingadera <gasps> mm. Oh. Mm. chingadera yeah I got my own chingadera in my hand so right now we're taking out the factory air box because we need to get to the top bolt on the sway bar. Clamp, a little C style clamp that goes over the top of the uh, sway bar. And it looks like on the driver's side, this is just gonna have to come off. I think on the passenger side, we're gonna be able to get a straight shot with maybe like a wobbly. We'll see. All right, so Travis is pushing, prying and pulling, yanking out this factory intake. Just kind of separated it with the bolts right here. And then we're just gonna pull this thing out. There it is. That's how you do it. Just like that. Bam. Two seconds. Dang, I mean, you take a bath in that thing. <laughs> I know, right? It's like when I was a kid taking a bath in a barrel. Because I grew up poor. <clears throat> wooden barrel though, right? It was actually. It was yeah. a wooden barrel. That's that's no joke. Was I have it, pictures. It, did you heat the wooden barrel underneath by fire? No. I, we didn't have heat, man. No, I'm talking about it. I mean, you have to change the barrel every time. <laughs> so I grew up in Texas. I grew up in Shingle Springs. It's Travis is using a warbly 18 mil down there. Breaking this thing loose. So right here, you can see the top bolts on the clamp. Uh, that one is really close to the alternator right there. So you guys got to watch out for that. Hi. Brandon is down there. Going underneath the car, we're on a lift, but he's still crawling on the ground. 
as yeah. you do. So the passenger side's a pretty straight shot, huh, Travis? Yeah, you pretty much just gotta fish around a couple of wiring harnesses and looks like transmission cooler lines. And we'll get right to it. All the bolts were accessible from the top, except that one right there underneath the alternator. So we're gonna go ahead and lift up the car again and try to get to that one. We got a oh, ratcheting, yeah. what is that, 18 mil? 18 mil, but it doesn't want to stay on. So we got both sides off now. Now the fishing of the sway bar begins. We got to get this out. Some sort of wiggly pattern. Let's make sure we don't murder a radiator. We got tons of room. I can no longer see it, so that's all you. Nothing came out. So there's the difference in the sway bar right there. The factory one only has one hole, whereas the Petters one has three holes. So the inside is gonna be your stiffest setting. Outside is gonna be your softer setting right there. So Travis is throwing that bar back in right now. You wanna make sure you have these pointing at an upward angle. When you look at the bar, these point up. Do not install it upside down or else you'll be doing it twice and that's no fun. So this job definitely is a lot easier to do with two people as you can have a friend on the other side helping kind of guide around all the stuff underneath there and make sure you're not shoving holes and things. Yeah. Magic there. fingers. In there. So Brandon Magic just fingers. moved that AC line out of the way just a little bit as you guys can kind of see. Yeah, you kind of cannot see. Oh, there it is. The AC line back in there. Just kind of move that out of the way and then Boom, it'll fall into place. Boom shaka laka. Dude. <laughs> so what do you, you got the lube there? Let's see how this thing does. Yes. Ah. You know when you're a kid you take kitchen packets and wind them up real tight and throw them oh. <laughs> and they explode? That's, kind of That's pretty much what this is doing. Yeah. <laughs> now remember in our last video, we put it everywhere. If you're moaning it, makes it better. Yeah. That's gonna be fun. Probably. So, Brandon is attempting to get that polyurethane bushing on right now. Looped it all up. Travis lost his. Yeah, it's in there somewhere. It's uh, in the under tray, so don't do that. We'll probably have to load the car back down so we get mine. So all right. <laughs> so from the top on this particular one, it's actually really easy to get to. Uh, we found it, it was floating around down there in the bottom, but it's easier to get to from the top. So if you're not on a lift, you don't have to lower your car. But if you're on a lift, you might want to just lower the car and do it from there. So we got those installed. Now we're just putting the factory bolts back up in there and gonna retorque it down. Tightening up the bushing mounting hardware right now. That should be torqued to 50 to 52 foot pounds on the 18 millimeter bolts. Cars are all installed. Travis got the in link set up. He's got it set to the middle position, which is it is basically a neutral setting. That's the uh, middle setting. So the closest, like I said, is your hardest setting and the one that's furthest away is your softest setting. And that would be more closer to the factory setting on the outside here. However, this bar is a couple millimeters bigger. So the factory front bar is 34 millimeters and the Petters bar is 35 millimeters. But this will actually kind of change the way the bar sets up, like I said, so you can make some fine tuning adjustments uh, once you get out on track and kind of feel what the car is doing. You can dial this in and uh, really make the car handle a lot better. Went ahead and put this suspension angle sensor back on, hooked that back up, got all the stuff tightened down. Travis is throwing the wheels on and that pretty much wraps up the front install on the GT350. All right, so as you guys can see, we've moved to the rear sway bar now. Travis went ahead and broke the in links loose on the top here. These are just little 10 mil bolts. Take these off and then it'll get the brake line out of your way. And then there's actually a little tab that you'll take off when you get the in link off. First thing you wanna do is, there's a little 10 mil nut, which we've already pre-loosened. It holds the uh, rear brake line. 
So you want to take this guy off, get that out of your way, and then next you'll want to take off the uh, nut for the end link, which it's an 18 mil nut, and then the inner for the uh, Allen key is going to be a six. Here. All right, so all the mounting bolts are off now. We have the sway bar just kind of hanging out on that dual exhaust. And Travis is going to go ahead and pull that through. Figure out a way to fish it through. Probably. I'll give, me, I'll, I'll give you a little tap, maybe. No. Nope. There. There, there it is. There we go. I know we watched them do it before. Maybe they came off the other side. Let's try the other side. You're very close. There's just a uh, rear diffuser in there. Hey, look at there. Look at that. Well, I definitely want to come from out on the driver's side, apparently. Yeah, it came out really nice and easy. This rear bar is very simple. Front bar is very simple as well, but oh, rear is even easier. Oh, Brandon's missing out on the uh, greasing department. This is his favorite thing. I know. Why does he always moan? Mmm. Gotta get it all in there. I think that's what Brandon says. Yeah, that way it doesn't squeak. And no squeaky. Yeah. Oh, I'll put some more in there. Oh no, we're running low. So Good then we got the new tabs. These are for the brakes, right? For the yeah, brake that's lines. for the brake lines. So the ones that we took out from the factory are a little different. So we're going to put these in there. They did it, I believe, for clearance. So you definitely want to note uh, the orientation of the bar. Um, if you look at the mustachio, uh, that's, that's pointing down. So you want to make sure the car is here and the ground is here. <laughs> Easiest way to put it, I guess. Then we go fishing again. Somehow or another, we get back in there. Pretty much the hardest part of the job, but not too bad. Not horrible yet. Except for this turn, it might be interesting. Maybe. We'll just help. Make the turn. It goes over, right? There we go. Just like that. Boom. Cool. Cool. Then we'll get the uh, brackets to hold it in place. You will reuse the factory uh, bracket clamps, whatever you want to call those nifty things, uh, and the factory hardware to put those back in. All right, so we pretty much got everything in. Uh, we've gone ahead and installed the uh, little brackets for holding the sway bar mounts. Uh, we went and torqued those down. Let me double check here. The bracket hardware is 38 to 42 foot pounds. Um, it's in the instructions that uh, Petters has given us. Uh, next thing we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to install the end link. But if you note, we had the uh, brake line bracket. Petters has supplied us with new uh, brackets. So you want to see how the tab will go under the sway bar and up, and then this will fit on here. Um, there isn't a uh, nut plate on the back, but they did supply a nut that you can uh, attach the factory bolt to with a nut to hold the brake line in place. End link nut's going to be like 46 to uh, 48 foot pounds. So really tight because you really don't want that to come off and then these guys they actually tell us to torque them to 28 to 32 foot pounds on this uh bolt right here so we're going to go ahead and uh, finish up the torquing values on this here's the nut that petter supplies for their bracket because it doesn't have a nut plate on the back like i say it's just a 13 mil just put it in there what i usually do i'm just going to go ahead and put the bolt through the brake line bracket put it through there kind of get it a little hand start on here and then we'll tighten it down and torque it down one-handed, no, can't see what I'm doing. Is that aircraft training? <laughs> yeah, I can get it on there. I'm trying to not get in the video so y'all can see what's going on. Good and tight method, but we'll probably check it with a torque because why not? All right, guys, so that pretty much wraps up the sway bar install. What yeah. do you think of the whole thing? I would definitely say it wasn't a bad deal. Um, a couple guys have said two hours for the front, an hour for the rear. Um, definitely, if you're laying around the floor in your garage with some jack stands, I would say that's probably an adequate time. Yeah. Um, we probably knocked out about an hour and about 30 minutes in the, for the rear. An hour for the front, 30 minutes for the yeah. rear bar. Um, probably but the, the alternator bolt was probably like the worst that, bolt. That definitely kind of tied us up. Um, having the lift made life a lot easier, so I feel sorry for anybody that's going to do it on the floor. Right. But uh, front bar, definitely have someone help you out. Um, that's You need somebody to help you kind of twist it around. Uh, rear bar, you could probably do by yourself, but if you have a friend on the other side, yeah. it definitely helps definitely out. Definitely going to help. Um, with this car, it probably would definitely help out because they have the uh, little rear diffuser. 
I think on the GT, I don't think that diffuser is there, so it'll probably be a little bit easier to do yeah. it by yourself. Cool. Um, other than that, I mean, hardware is great. Yeah. Good stuff. Get some cool stickers. No bull install. No bull install. Perfect. Um, but yeah, we're going to take it out to the track this weekend, see what it does. Hopefully, uh, we'll see an improvement. If not, I mean, we have three-way adjustability now. We yeah. started out in the center, so we'll either go to the forward hole or the rear hole and see what happens. Right. Who knows? It might help it out. Play around with the holes, get it dialed in. And <laughs> Get it feeling right. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Later. Wrench on. <gasps> Whoa! Yeah. Just Whoa. tap it in. Somehow this is gonna go in there. Oh, we can just play golf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Thank Force you. My handlebar mustache. <laughs> We've pretty much got everything installed. We've got the uh, clamps some put on, or the brackets, or the little U clips, or I don't know what you want to call this thing. I'll start over. That, that was stupid. <laughs> that being out. There. All right, guys. Overall, that pretty much wraps up. The no, let's start over. Install. I'll start wiping my face okay, off. That looks stupid.